I said, hey, hey, hey. What, what you, you got, got to say? say? <laughs> Hollywood! You're listening to the Pillaging Podcast, companion podcast to pillagingjustforfun.com. The only Raider fan site made by Raider fans for Raider fans. Tune in every week on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Stitcher Radio. Call and leave a message to be played on air at 408-909-PJFF. Brought to you by Creative Media Design Studio. Check them out at creativemediamonterey.com. Hey, yo, it's time to pillage another podcast. I'm your host, Kenny Stapler. What's good, Che? Oh, another victory. Put it in the books, man. Feels good. It feels good like Tony Tony Tone, man. <laughs> feels good. It feels real good. Oh. Um, We called, uh, I hate to say we told you so, but. We told you so. I, I don't hate <laughs> to say it. We told you so. We did, we did, we told you so. I think both of us predicted forty plus. Forty plus, yeah. We we remember I was coming with some crazy number. I said forty at first. I was like, I don't even know how to get there. But then I said forty two, and then you hit it on the nose with the forty five. Forty five, right? And then uh, I I I wanted the shutout, mm-hmm. which I still I'm kind of mad that we didn't get that shutout. Yeah, I'm kind of mad that we didn't get that shutout. Okay, so now that you say that, I don't have this on my list, but Jeff Trip. If it wasn't for Jeff Triplett, I would have been almost dead on. On the podcast, I predicted forty five ten. On our survey online, I did put in the forty five thirteen. Okay, and uh, if it wasn't for him, we maybe maybe hold him right there. Yeah, that's nonsense, man. You know what call I'm talking about? Yeah, Bruce Irvin. I, yeah, I thought this was football. I thought we were watching football too. I thought this was football. <laughs> what were, what were we watching on that play? I don't know. Apparently, you can't play football anymore. So you got pay, it's patty cake now. Footballing too hard. The, come on, man. On the defense. Footballing too hard on the defense. Come on with that. Hurt a player's feelings. Oh. Number 51. Oh, you okay, mijo? <laughs> you okay, mijo? Hey. You need a Band-Aid? Put him down easy, Bruce. Put him down Get easy. Get out of here, man. Shh. No, Bruce. Bruce, you, you do exactly what you did on that play. You see Jack? Get all up in there? Yeah, Jack was. Jack was. Jack lit hated. him up. Jack lit him up. I love it. Uh, That's what I'm talking about. So he got called for a similar tackle last week. Now, last week, almost excessive, but I still wouldn't have called that. That's nonsense, man. I still man. wouldn't have called How that. How is it excessive if the dude isn't, hasn't gone down and, and, and the dude's trying to fight out of the tackle? Oh, he no. was trying to run. He's trying to keep running. Mm-hmm. And he put him down. Yeah. He put him down the best way possible. And I love it. You keep on throwing dudes on the floor like that. I don't care. Yeah. Just keep it. Get That's that, a BS call, man. Take that penalty every week. Just let them know. Yeah, just man. let them know we're coming. We're coming. Um. So that. Yeah. So yeah. That's how we started the show. <laughs> uh, I wanted to ask you how you were doing. Um. And uh, what, what do we have new? What's going on new out there in oh, social media? Just just so you know, just so you know. I mean, obviously, we got this wonderful podcast. We got we got the website pj4f.com, right? Um. We've uh we've added another feature. To uh to to the family here, we we got ourselves a little social media page on Instagram. We're out there, so we'll be posting. Uh, you know, we'll post we'll we'll post up different things on there. We'll be letting everybody know when when the episodes are coming, when to look out for them. Yeah. Um, you know, maybe we'll get some some live vids on there, man. Maybe of of, of us recording, or maybe out at the game too here pretty soon. Yeah. Um, but yeah, man, we, we all encompassing. Right, all trying co- to bring it all together, bring the family together. All, Raider fans are family, so find us, man. Yeah, when you go to the grocery store, I want to be there. That's right. I'm gonna help you to your car. <laughs> We're everywhere. We're out there. PJ4F bagging groceries. <laughs> yeah, so look for look for that page, the Pillaging Podcast Instagram page. Mm-hmm. Um, also, big shout out to Creative Media Studio. Uh, they got the T-shirts in stock right now, uh, ready to be printed. I believe my man over there set up the screen uh, this weekend. Um, I got to see a mock-up. I'm going to show Che here at the break. Um, they look good. We're going to be going black with white ink, and I believe they're oh, doing yeah. white with black ink. We're going to keep it simple at first. But we got a lot of different variations. This is going to be a limited run, as they all will. We're going to come with a bunch of different colors. We're going to hit you. I like the silver on white. I'm waiting for uh, that. That'll be dope. That'll be dope. Fresh. That'll be dope. It's going to be nice. So uh, we got a few different designs. We do have merchandise. The storefront is set up on their website as of right now. Uh, I don't believe they're taking orders yet. I'm going to check that. I'm going to hit you with the break. I'm just getting all this news is all coming to me right now. So um, exciting. We promised we'd have it for you, and it is coming. So those are that's the news. That's where we're at, huh? 
and uh, we're going to break down this Jets game for you right about now. Bear with me. I'm I'm exhausted. I don't know if I seem different today, but uh, I've had ba- I've been four back to back meetings that stretched over nine hours. Uh, yeah, back to back to back to back. Man. And now I'm home. And then after this, I'm gonna blast to uh, San Francisco to pick up my niece. Is out there. She needs. She got broken foot. So I'll bring her home for the weekend. And uh, wait, where's the Niner game at tonight? It's not in the not in Santa Clara, is it? I'm all. It's not in San Francisco, is it? It's no, it's San Francisco. Not. It's never in San Francisco. <laughs> Go figure, right? San Francisco uh, 49ers, not in San Francisco. Am though. I going to hit that or no? Uh, No. Man, I don't know. Let's, well, don't let's know. check it out. Let's check it out. Let's, let, I mean. Yeah, so he's he's on that. I, I saw that the Niners, in the meantime, I saw that they scored their first touchdown this 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 evening. And then on, on the, the Niners scored their first touchdown this Yeah, evening? and on the same drive, it looks like they might have lost Carlos Hyde for the year. Uh, I just got updated. It said that he's back, but we'll see how effective he is. Uh, okay. Uh, well. see, more on that later. I don't know. It doesn't really matter where they're playing. Does it? Well, because it. I guess. I mean, for you it does, but I'm talking about for everybody else. No, does it really no. Back, back it up. For me, maybe it doesn't because I've seen the seats on 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 TV. <laughs> it's empty over there, right? I mean, yeah, traffic always, might be better if they are playing. In yo, Santa Clara I right just now. heard that they're trying to just bust out bargains over there right now. They're wow. like trying to sell tickets for fourteen dollars, man. I got a uh, ticket to the Raider game next week. You think they'll trade me for the whole stadium? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought, it's too. About, <laughs> it's about equal value right there, man. It's about equal value right there. You get season tickets at a Niner game I for mean, one ticket. Bro, I'd hate to trade a Raider ticket, but all we need is a couple coats of paint, and then we ain't moving to Vegas no more, baby. <laughs> uh, nah, nah, nah. No, no, no. All right, all right. No, no, no. All right, all right. Stay out of that stadium. That, stadium's, <laughs> that stadium is it's, bad luck, man. It's Don't curse, me. bro. It's curse. No, yeah, that's it's, a curse right there. Feels like Stay away from there. Feels like an airport over there. <laughs> it really does. It really does, man. It really does. Oh, man. Um, you know you know it's bad when people show up and the game's on and they're pissed because they can't get into Great America's parking lot. Okay, here's what I want to do. Yeah, yeah. They're just mad they can't go to Great America. <laughs> And here's what I got to say about 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 it over there too. I'm noticing I'm this real talk. I'm noticing the empty seats over there. For those that wonder why we're spending time on this, we live in the South Bay, so like the only other game we get on TV is that game. I'm broke and I can't afford the NFL ticket, okay? So Right, right. That's that's what I get. And so yeah, we see that and uh I have friends that are Niner fans, and I'm cool with them, but most Niner fan is just this obnoxious dude. Well, now he's disappeared. Now he's not saying anything, <laughs> right? Niner fan ain't talking shit anymore, but, <laughs> like, um, yeah. Yeah, so, but there's nobody in the seats, and so I'm asking people that are going to the games, and they're saying, oh, it's so hot out there that we're at the world. We're over there by the concessions, and I'm like, so you're, 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 you're trading furniture for tickets or whatever it is you guys are doing over there. Uh, you're trading in your Volkswagen for a pair of tickets, going to a game and huddling around a hot dog stand and watching on a flat screen television. Let me tell you, go to a Raiders game within the first four weeks of this season, strap on a black jersey and uh, sit on the visitor side like we do. Yeah, that's where we normally are. And uh, you tell me it's nice and cool over there. Yeah, in go, Alameda. Go, go ahead. Try that out. man. Try that out. Give it a shot. Give it a shot. See, see, see who wants to abandon their seats, too. Yeah. See who wants to abandon their seats. Che pointed it out. Uh, I, Good luck I, with that. I took a break last year. I had to take a 15 minute. Yeah, but you were about to pass Woo, out. I was hot. You, you were putting in work. You, you, you were was. about to pass out. You needed, you needed to rehydrate. <laughs> I, I was. I, I forgive I was. you for that one. I was. And then Che jumped in and then I came back and it was like the rotation was effective. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we got people spraying your mouth with Gatorade like it's all good. Like you're like get back in there. So you know, I always got some beverages in my hand. <laughs> I always got some beverages in my hand. Man. There you go. I come through in the clutch. So what beverage are you drinking this week? Oh, you already know, people. You already know. Another victory equals another delicious peanut butter milk stout. It's the belching beaver. Yeah. Yeah. Go get yourself some, man. Treat yourself. Yeah, treat where, yourself. Where, where can they find that? Uh, you know what, man? I'm I'm looking out because grocery outlet. Really? Grocery outlets rocking rocking out with some some dope beers over there, man. Wow. They got their beer game on lock. So, uh, yeah, man, I'm hitting up the grocery outlet. I don't know if I don't know if, if uh I don't know. I'm, if I'm you, sure Bevmo. I'm sure if you go hit yeah. up Bevmo, you'll find it. 
Um, but I don't know that any other store is carrying it besides them. Can you hit me with the theme song? Grocery Outlet theme song? <laughs> <laughs> Grocery Outlet. Bargain Market. <laughs> that's, that's how it goes. You got to the bargain market. That's how it goes. Yeah. Shout out to Grocery Outlet, man. Yeah. Let's get us a sponsor there, too. I, did, dude, I think why not, dude? I just told you I'm going to be helping you with your groceries. Yeah, there you go. So <clears throat> get a discount. Hook it yeah. up. I'm looking into another sponsorship opportunity right now, but I don't know if it sucks. And so if it sucks, oh, I'm going to pass on if it. You're debating. Yeah, it looks good, but I don't know. We're, you know, trying hey. to, you know, we're trying to keep it cool. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, I don't know. You can't jump all over every opportunity. Yeah, 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 yeah. You got to really know what's going on. Exactly. What's what. And we're not trying to sell this whole thing out. That's right. We ain't sell us. Come on. We ain't moving to vague. I'm sorry. Hold on. So let's get back on track here. <laughs> um <laughs> Let's grade out this Jets game. We we started grading last week's game, and then we just started. We we like gave two grades, and then we just broke it down. Yeah, yeah <laughs> we did. Here's the grade for last Move week's on. game. I give it a W. How about that? There you go. That's the only that's the only letter that matters. All right. So all phases of the team were again um, stellar. Let's just maybe call out some of the highlights of last week. The first thing I have on my list is KJ grading out as the highest rated safety of the week. He graded out out at what? 91.1. There it is. I told you this kid was coming. Pro football focus. Man, he was all over the field. I loved it, man. He mm-hmm. was all over the field. Uh, blitzes, you called that. You called that earlier this season. I did. Er, in the off season. you I- called it. You said, expect KJ to come with the blitzes. Expect him to put him in some special packages. They, they're they bringing him. They're I- bringing him, and I'm loving it. He got pressures. He got a sack. He had a strip. He's doing it all, man. That's it. I told you he was going to have four sacks. He's got one. There it is. And, he, and it came with a fumble. And he almost had two. Did you see that yeah. second one? He came. He actually jumped. He tried to jump over the tackle. I think the tackle was trying to get over to block him. Yeah. He jumped over, and he just barely missed. He actually ended, ended up running into uh, Bruce, I think. I'm telling you, Pagano's using that dude like a missile. Um, so, KJ. Uh, he was bringing it, the heat, man. He was, dude. He had, I don't know. How, I, I forget what they listed. That he had He had, uh a few tackles for loss too, or a couple tackles for loss too. Let me see. If I'm not it's sure. On not sure on the exact number, but yeah, four defensive stops. Four defensive stops. It's killing it, man. Yeah, I'm loving it. Loving it. Um, another highlight of that game was Nicholas Morrow. He's graded out at an 84.1 right now. Um, he's allowed only negative three yards receiving this yeah. season. Yeah, I saw that too. Um, so much he's doing so well that 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 they're that they're uh, that they're really. Uh, Dividing up that time with him and Adams right now. And you know what's a trip is Jelani Jenkins was cut today. Cut today? By the Buffalo Bills. Oh, <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. Yeah. Did we let go of that dude? <laughs> we did. And some people were like, oh. Already? Yeah. They were like, oh, thought he looked okay. You know, he got a little hurt. He got dinged up after that first preseason game. And then now he's cut. And and Nicholas who? Nicholas Morrow. He, he stepped Nicholas up. Nicholas Morrow, right, man. Hey, man, you know so, what? Hey. If we've learned anything, if we've learned anything is that – that our boy is doing his job up there in the big seat. Yeah. And he's 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 he knows something, man. He knows something that we don't. Maybe we don't understand it. Maybe we can get angry in the moment. But let's let's go ahead and put faith in Reggie, man. I, I got faith in Reggie ever since we started turning this thing around. So Ooh. if he makes that if he makes a decision, I'm gonna go ahead and say, you know what, Reggie, you know what you're doing. Yeah. Do the damn thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, another highlight of that game was uh, the, the running game. We ran for 180 yards in that game. Um, it was split up fairly well. Richard had 58. Patterson, well, you know, Patterson, he broke it off. He had 57 yards. Lynch with 45 on 12 attempts. And DeAndre Washington had himself 20. Yep. And three of those guys all scored touchdowns. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Three, ru- hey, three <laughs> touchdowns on the ground, three through the air. What I mean, what more can you ask for except for four, five, and six? I mean, dude, we're killing him. We were killing him. We called that. Yeah. We said we we're gonna smash on these guys. We did. We did. This is no like like the, like our caller. Well, I, I forget who was the caller last week. Said I don't believe in trap games. You're absolutely right. Yeah. Absolutely right. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. The Jets. Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on. So letting us pump the brakes. I mean, it was the Jets, but it was the Jets. But you know what? It's it's teams like this that will spark guys that need the spark. Like Joseph needed that game, yeah, and this man. is this is where it starts is, is in a game like this. Because once you feel that, and once you see it for yourself, 
in play and you know that you can do it, you're going to do it again. Yep. The first time you dunked a ball in high school, like you're like, I can do that. Now, neither one of us ever did that. I, I did, actually. Did you? Yeah, I did. I got. I might have got lucky, but I did. Okay. I did. The first time I dunked the ball, I was like, oh. All right, so bad I example. Dunk the ball, but but then because but then, then my knees but then, the, but then the knees went bad, and then the <laughs> ankles started going, and then it was all over. All I right. haven't seen I haven't seen the rim in over ten years, man, 10, 15 years. Point is, the point is, is once you see yourself doing something, you you can do it again. And 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 another kid that broke out in that game, I thought was Gary and Conley. Yes, forty four snaps. Yes, eight yards allowed. Yes, and I think he graded out somewhere around a, uh, an eighty four. He was up there. He was or up 81 there. 81 or something? Yeah. He had one reception for eight yards, man. Come on. Yeah. And then, of course, the rookie. The, and, of course, at, the, the pass defense that we all saw. Yeah. Yes. The, that we all saw that, you know what? A lot of people, like even the announcers, mm-hmm. um, the announcers, funny because CBS announcers, right? I was listening to the CBS broadcast. Yeah, me too. And uh, 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 what's his face? Former Charger? Um, Dan name? Fouts. Yeah, Dan Fouts. Fan Douts. Fan Douts. <laughs> Yeah. That's... Yeah. Anyways, this dude, he's like, oh, and and he had the awareness to bat it towards Reggie Nelson, which he didn't. Which he didn't. He admitted, <laughs> like after the game, they're, they're, they were interviewing. He's like, no, nah, man, I was just trying to get that ball down on the ground because I didn't know where the receiver was. But either way, man. Yeah. Either way, the kid did great, mm-hmm. and that's exactly what we wanted to see. Mm-hmm. Everybody's already raving about him. Mm-hmm. Everyone's talking about the Raiders finally got their number one cornerback, and you know what? That's why we drafted him, and that's why Reggie picked him, and that's yeah. why everybody that thought we were going to go linebacker was like, huh? Yep. And because now, we're not Reggie, and he knows something, man. And now look at this. Sean Smith out with a neck injury. He was full go, I think, Wednesday. He was limited today. I don't expect him to go. TJ Carey grades out higher than Emerson last week. Could we possibly end the season with TJ Carey and Gary and Conley as our starting cornerbacks. It's it's a possibility. It's That's definitely wild. a possibility. That's crazy. It's definitely a possibility. Um, but I don't know. Do we tr- do, Who do we trust in the slot if that's who well, our two, it, it, two well, cornerbacks are? It's just like uh, what happens right now. What would happen is Kerry would move down into the slot and, Am- Amer- a, and okay. Amerson would come back on the field. All right. I yeah. mean, I could, I could see that. I could yeah. see that working. But, yeah. I mean, if, yeah. if you're, if you're going to say, you know, a third, the third, the third cornerback is yeah. our slot cornerback. Then yeah. it doesn't work. But if it works like that, okay, just move him over. Then I, it's very possible, man. It's very, very likely that we see Kerry and Conley one and two reverse that Conley one, Kerry two. <laughs> um. So yeah, and then uh, I think the only real disappointment in that game was the nine penalties that we had. But I'm gonna put that on Jeff Triplett because. <laughs> You need to jump in the garbage. Yeah, man. This week, you're Jeff Triplett's trash player of the week. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, while we're at it, Carl Joseph, you the real MVP. Yeah, you already know. Uh, I mean, I could give that to anybody really on the team, but I'm a big Carl Joseph fan, and he had a breakout game. Everybody else, I felt like did what they were supposed to do. Yeah, and KJ did what we've been waiting for him to do. Yeah, I mean, I mean. All right, he's yeah. not the MVP. I mean, All right, he's not the MVP. <laughs> no, you know what, Carl Joseph did. Did his thing, man. He did highest highest the, graded player high, on the team last come on, weekend. Come on. So. Uh, so so we can go ahead and give him the MVP, but yeah. it's kind of hard. Yeah. When when you got a guy that scored three touchdowns <sighs> in Michael Crab, Michael also. Crabtree with three grabs. Um. So yeah, well we'll talk about that later. Yeah. Michael Crabtree with three three grabs. This guy doesn't seem to be stopping. I think he's showing you that it was really all about the broken finger last season that yep. got overshadowed by another broken finger. You know, it was like the battle of the broken fingers it in the media. The of, it was. It was. You know, Derek and, Carr's and, glove and for, had its own Twitter account. Like, how are you gonna how are you gonna really compete with that? You can't. Yeah. You can't. You better hush up. You better hush up, man. Keep it. Keep it to yourself. Um. So that was the Jets game in a nutshell. Uh, Derek Carr again. Uh, no. No interceptions. No. No turnovers at all for this nope. team so far. Nope. Um and uh, we we have, we have a couple more quick hits about this game, but we'll talk about it in the quick hit segment okay. later. A couple yeah. other standout yeah. stats. Yeah, yeah. Anything else you want to say about this game? We still didn't grade this game. We still haven't graded the game. I told you <laughs> it was a W. I give it a W, a w plus. That's it. Yeah. Let's go. Ahead. I mean, offense. I give it an A. Offense was an A, solid all the way through. Man, what what was there to complain about? Receivers A. I mean, yeah, yeah. A. A uh maybe offensive just, line yeah. graded out as the best offensive line in the National Football League this week and with good reason. Let I mean 
did we see our boys get into that second level? Yeah. I love that, man. Yeah, I love that. I love that. Man. I love that. Gabe, Funky Jackson. KO. KO. KO getting out there. Funky Jackson. Uh, yeah, man. That's what we're calling it. And, Hud- and Hudson, man. Uh, those three guys, I mean, even, I mean, Pan and, and, and Newhouse, they did their thing too. Okay, yeah. I'm not going to take anything away. But, like, on a consistent basis, mm-hmm. you see that those three middle, the three, the middle of that line mm-hmm. is always getting after that second level, man. And, and they get nasty, man. They do. And I love it. I love it. They want to they wanna hit somebody, man. They want to hit somebody. That's a nasty crew. That's a bad boys club right there. That's car insurance. Hey, you right know there. what? And, and 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 you know what? Last last year there was all this all this talk and argument that that the Raiders was the, the Raiders had the second best offensive line in the league. Mm. Okay, I think our I think our boys are trying to prove a point here. Man. Yeah. Okay. Don't be don't be telling us that we're we're number two. <laughs> okay. Because how how do those Cowboys do? By the way. Uh, Cowboys look like doo doo. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, how how many rushing yards did uh did Elliot have? I don't know. I Something don't like know. eight. Eight? Was it really? Something that like low? eight in like nine carries. Dang. And Dak uh, apparently is not a clutch player. Apparently not. Um oh, but 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 last year they were talking about how he he might be better than Derek Carr, so get out of here. Come dude. on, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, special teams graded out with the A plus. Um King still doing his thing. Tavecchio still perfect on the season. Oh, and uh, Tavecchio and, and Rashard and Patterson doing their thing. We're averaging uh, really nice on the return game right now. Yes, I think it's like seventeen plus on punts and it's yeah. twenty seven plus on kickoffs. Yeah, so uh, just killing it right now. Special teams and defensive side of the ball. Now, what I didn't like to see was that they still gave up over a hundred yards rushing. Yeah, man. You yeah, know, they, they 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 were they were shutting it down early. They were shutting it down early. Shutting it down early, and maybe that's a whole like a lax thing, whatever. But come on, man, let's let's be dominant. Let's let's let these teams know that they can't run the ball on us. And how are you gonna because let, we're gonna face better teams than the Jets, yo? How are you gonna allow old ass Josh McCown to break off twenty two yards on you? You know what though? So here's here's the thing. This is this is how this happened. I was watching the game and I was pissed. I saw an illegal block I, in the I back. Was Did pissed. you see that? I mean, there was some. There was some. Eh, some come on, man. Dude. How many? How, how many times do we watch the games? Yeah. And we sit there yelling at the refs. And how many times do we get those calls? Never. Okay. Never. Last week <laughs> against Tennessee, that their, their DBs were holding onto our receivers all game long. Did they call anything? No. No. In the as a matter of fact, in in the middle of one of the catches that Crabtree had last last week, the week before, I mean, he was actually being. Pulled downward, man, mid-air, and still caught the ball. Yeah. So we're not going to get those calls, man. This That's the life of a Raider and a Raiders fan is that the referees are going to screw us, and we know this. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So holding is going to happen. You're going to see Khalil Mack, Irvin, and all the guys get held on a regular basis yeah. and rarely get a call. But the reason why McCown got that sack, or, or I mean got that run, um, when the when the the D line was getting after him, they kind of ran a little bit of a. Well, I think the first one was a blitz. Mm-hmm. I think the first run was a blitz, and um, and uh, Bruce went into coverage, and they brought they brought uh they they brought KJ on the left side. Yeah, and Autry was the last guy on that edge, so he needed to hold that edge, but. He ended up getting uh he ended up getting double blocked and kind of got sandwiched in and then instead of fighting to get to that edge, he just went with it. And okay. he tried to just create penetration right. and go with the movement. Right. And he ended and up And then he shallow. ended up creating a big ass lane right. for him to escape. Mm-hmm. Um that can't happen, man. We, we just got, got if, behind you're, him. if you're the last guy on that edge, you got to set that edge. You got to get, get wide. You got to set the edge, man. You got to set the edge. And then I think the other one was in the middle of a stunt. I think they actually stunted yeah. and again it opened up that whole that whole side for and, guy, and they broke out. For a guy like Autry, his goal shouldn't be getting to Josh at that point. He needs to be setting up other guys for success yeah. at that point. Because Autry, you're not going to be the guy to chase down Josh McNow- McCown. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Nick. Danico. I <laughs> yeah. like you. I think you're very talented. But you're not the guy that's going to shoot the gap and chase down McCown right there. And at the same time, on that very same play that I'm talking about, uh-huh. he dove through the middle of the two linemen that were blocking him and almost made the sack. 
He almost shoelace tackled him. Just barely missed that. But hold that edge, and then he's going to get swallowed up. He's going to get swallowed up by KJ and 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 Mac and Vanderdose, mm-hmm. or whoever else is out there with you, man. On the bright side, McCown only threw for 166 yards. Right. He did get two touchdowns. Um, let's talk about the touchdown to Jermaine Curse. Yeah. Amerson was like uh, just a, a half of a finger length shy of that you ball. You know what? On that he, first one, on the first one too, mm-hmm. there was a push off, man. Oh, yeah. There, there was, was a little bit of a push off. Sure. He got a little bit behind him, and he just put that stiff arm out just enough to, to, to make – Amerson kind of lose a step on him, mm-hmm. and so by the time Amerson actually went up for that ball, it, he was just he just missed it. It was yeah. like a fingernail. Amerson's gonna learn to shrug his shoulder right there, you know, fight yeah. through that because those push ups happen, and a lot of yeah. times they do slip by. So, like we said earlier, you just got to play through that. That's gonna be the motto this year. You just got to play through that because come playoffs, oh, it's gonna get wild. Yep, yep. You already know I'm not gonna reset that feeling for through you. That. Um, so we, we spent a lot of time in this first segment. It felt good, kind of like stretching our limbs out a little bit here. Um, we're going to come back after the break, and we're going to break down this Jets game. We're going to give you the quick hits, of course, the ICU segment. And uh, so, you mean that Washington game, Washington game. Did I just say Jets again? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're just going to keep breaking down the Jets game. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we keep breaking it down because it was it was it was a great feeling to break. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're headed to DC, um, and we'll break that down on the other side. In the meantime, I don't know. Let's let's check the uh, let's check the phone lines right now. It's a slow week, I think. Yeah, we don't have any callers at this time, so um, we're gonna hit you right real quick with just a word from uh, from me. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> since we really don't have any official sponsors just yet, and um, and we'll catch you guys on the other side. We out you. Peace. You're listening to the Pillaging Podcast, a companion podcast to pillagingjustforfun.com, the only Raider fan site made by Raider fans for Raider fans, featuring fan submitted articles and the most lively Raider Nation conversation on the internet. Follow us on Twitter at Pillage Just for Fun. That's at Pillage Just the Number Four Fun. Also, tune in every Tuesday on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Stitcher Radio. This is Big Ted 707. The Redskins. You know what? Screw the Redskins. We don't need to even win this game. It don't even matter. The Redskins mean literally less nothing to me. I care not. We should just forfeit this game. Uh, spend an extra week prepping for Denver. Uh, it's a game that's critical. We gotta go uh, finish the first month of the season with uh with a win in the division and that's all i care about i don't care Redskins, go raiders an underrated key to this game will be nick morrow covering chris thompson going back out of the backfield versus a linebacker that's covered ability let's see if we can stick at another week right and we're back um all right let's break down this redskins game check it out it's the Washington Redskins. It's Sunday Night Football. It's our first nationally televised game of the year. Oh. It's the first of many. And we'll be in D.C. Uh, D.C. Night games in Washington against the Raiders. Um, or I, sh- I should say in Washington, but, but night game against the Redskins. You know, the only one I really recall is Black Sunday when we beat them in the Super Bowl. Ah. So, I don't know. It just always reminds me of that. How you like that, Redskins fans? How you like that? <laughs> you like that? You like that? <laughs> yeah, Kirk Cousins doesn't like that. <laughs> 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 so um, we're we're over here and uh, we're looking at the PFF matchup. Some of you guys probably seen these graphics that were released. I think uh, SB Nation, Silver and Black Pride, put these out earlier. Obviously, they come from PFF, um, but he publishes them because he's got a membership. I don't because <laughs> I feel I don't know. I take them and leave them. The PFF grades, I feel like they're a good kind of like barometer, but they're not the gospel. Right. Right. Right, I agree. I agree. Because you got a guy right now. I'm looking at it right now, and you. I think you pointed this out. You got a guy like Gabe Jackson. He's graded out at a 55.6. Yeah, man. Come and on. Amari Cooper, although he's been dropping the ball, is a 42.3. Yeah. Um, yeah that's little, this that's seems little, ultra low, you know. Too low. And all, all due respect to the Redskins. I mean, I don't, they're no super team, but they have like one, two, three, four. I think they have seven players on their entire team that grade out above. A, a 69 mm. or 66 whatever it, mm. i mean that just seems kind of harsh but um 
you know, on, on other numbers, I guess you, I guess you like the ones that are favor, favorable and don't like the ones that aren't. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I really don't know. Some of them seem pretty pretty legit. Like like Lee Smith right now at a seventy six point seven. That's solid. I'd give him one of those. So, yeah, I give him that. You know, I give him that. Uh, Kaliki's a eighty eight point or Kalechi's a eighty eight point four. Um, but then and then Josh Norman's graded out at eighty one point eight for Washington. That seems about right for a player his caliber. So I don't know, you know, Swearinger though, DJ Swearinger's a 38. Well, their their secondary is playing like poo poo. We're going to talk about that. Dodo. Anyways, just en- enough on the scores, I guess. But we're just looking at that, and this game looks really imbalanced. So last week when I was thinking about the Redskins, I like Kirk Cousins. I think he's a good quarterback. I think he's he's savvy. I'll I'll say that he's savvy. I'll give him that. He's not dynamite. Nah. He's not going to kill you with his arm. Yeah. But he's like a savvy quarterback. Yeah. He's going to take what you give him. He's pretty savvy, you know, and uh, I I don't know. I just kind of like, man, it, it, I don't want to call it a trap game, but if there is going to be, because we, I don't really believe in them anymore at this point with this team. I don't believe in trap games, but nope. you're going all the way across the country. You know, you're on national television, but I also think we thrive there unless it's the Kansas City Chiefs. And uh, so I don't know. How do you just, what's your gut feeling going into this game? Because mine's changed. I feel really confident right now. I'm confident, man. Yeah. Uh, listen, Washington is a better team than the Jets. Mm-hmm. But they're not on our level. Let's be real. Let's just be real. They're not on our level, man. So I I don't I, I expect a little bit more of a challenge. Yeah. From the Redskins. Yeah. But I'm sorry. We should be we should be beating these guys handily. When the season started, I looked at this squad and I was thinking about like our team. We hadn't seen anything yet. And I was like, this is the exact kind of team that can hurt us because our defense being what it was, what it is, even though it was good down the stretch, whoop de whoop. Like we had some question marks there. I felt it, Kirk Cousins, the kind of, we make every quarterback look good. And he's the kind of quarterback, well, if you're going to give him that, that's where his savviness can hurt you. Right. And now coming off of two weeks, even though a much lesser opponent last week, but still, it's an NFL team. I'm feeling a whole lot better about this defense, and I'm looking at the injury report. We'll, we'll list that a little bit later, and uh, I just feeling really this could be not another blowout, but a lopsided victory. It's gonna be lopsided, and I and there's very very big possibility that it could be a blowout. I'm not I'm not gonna take the blowout there's, off the table. There's, okay, I'm there not gonna take the blowout no. off the table because I think we're that much better than them. Listen, Kirk Cousins, like you said, for. For everything he he's he did really well last season. Yeah, you're right. He he's savvy. He's got some like he he's got like an attitude, right, man. He's mm-hmm. he's trying to prove people wrong. So you you give him that much, you know. He's got that mental fortitude. Yeah, but um, but he lost his two top receivers from last year. He don't got his receivers from last year. You know who he does have though? Yeah, Ter- Terrell Pryor. Terrell Pryor, senior, senior, senior. Right. And we all know, we're all very familiar with Terrell Pryor. And props to him for having a great season last year. But you know what? This is the Cleveland Browns where you're the only person that could possibly do anything on this team. Mm. Where you're going to get all the targets Mm. and get the ball thrown to you all the time either. So, I'm not buying it, man. I'm not buying Terrell Pryor on this team right now. He hasn't shown anything in the first two weeks to make me buy Terrell Pryor as a real serious weapon. And if we're really we're really liking what we see out of Conley, I think Conley has the ability to shut him down. Oh, he's gonna shut him down. Yeah. So And more on him later. More on Terrell Pryor later. More yeah. on that later. Yeah. I got I got something to say about him. Uh yeah. Say, hey, hey, hey. What, what you, you got, got to say? say? <laughs> Hollywood. <laughs> yeah. So come on. So let's break down some of the key matchups for this next this next game. Um, right away, I think the standout players for the for the well, the standout player for me and for the Washington Redskins is jo- is Josh Norman. He's the guy that I think of when I think of the Redskins. Yeah. Kirk Cousins, Josh Norman, um, and then you got DJ Swearinger is their free safety who's playing like doo doo right now. It's those two guys versus Derek Carr. Josh Norman can only cover one guy at a time, and Swearinger's got to pick between Cordarrelle Patterson. Seth Roberts, Amari Cooper, Michael Crabtree, and Cook. Good luck with that, man. Just good luck. Good luck with that. And uh, pick your poison, man. Go and, ahead, pick your poison. And then underneath all that, you got running backs coming out of the backfield. Oh yeah. And and tell me the story. What's the story there with Washington so, yo, and running listen, backs? Listen, okay. So here here here's the story. 
the real this is the real key to the game here, okay? Because like like you just touched on, Josh Norman, he's one of the best uh, cornerbacks in in the game right now. Okay, mm-hmm. he 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 grades out really well against most top receivers. Um, <clears throat> so on the outsides, there's gonna be some battles. We're not always gonna win. Do I think we'll win? Yes, definitely. But over the middle, that linebacking crew that they have in Washington right now, and one of them might be very familiar to you guys because there was some talk about picking up one of these guys yeah. in the offseason. A lot of us, there was there was quite a few people, actually, that were a little bit upset. But hurt. Yeah, a little, a, little, like to a, use. A, little, hurt. a little upset Sad cheeks. that we didn't pick this guy up. Your boy, Zach Brown. Money okay? bags. Money bags Brown. Yeah, money bags Brown. Okay. Flew out of town, money bags Brown. <laughs> <laughs> it don't turn around. Yeah. Listen, these guys, man. Okay, these guys. He don't turn around because he gave up. He gave up two scores, so it's apparent he don't turn around. Yeah. yeah. Mason Foster is their other middle linebacker. I never even heard of him. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, but Mason Foster and Zach Brown have allowed 138 yards after the catch per Pro Football Focus. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And and last week, okay, former your bo- your boy form. Wait, my boy. No, 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 no. My no. former no, no, boy. Sorry, my bad, my bad, my bad, my bad. So hey. last week they allowed a hun- they they led, uh, allowed ten catches for ninety seven yards and a pair of touchdowns. Two running backs. Okay, that's not taking into account our tight ends, man. Okay, and yeah. we already saw what Rashard did last week. Okay. Yeah. And we know that Washington can also do do his thing in the, in the passing game. Yeah. And even Marshawn can do his thing. We have too many weapons. Okay. We have too many weapons that can go over the middle and cause havoc. And if these guys are as bad as they've as they as they've played in the first two weeks, mm-hmm. then we should have a field day. I don't think the Redskins have a single player that can tackle Marshawn Lynch, to be honest with you. No. Nah. But here's the thing. I think Marshawn Lynch gets a little bit more of a breather this week. I'm just – I have this feeling that Richard is going to have a big game. I think he's going to have a big game in the passing game. I see the Raiders to kind of mix it up this week and really open things up. The the Redskins are really, really shallow right now at corner and secondary. If we can put four, three – spread out the tight end, and just spread them out this week. Mm-hmm. I, I see a lot of good things happening out of the backfield and, and in the deep passing game. I, I really see them going for the throat this That's week. That's it. That's it. That's it. And and like you said, Swearinger and the other safety right now, they're not grading out well. Yeah. So where we can really hit them and hurt them is on the deep plays, right? Deep we plays. Get, we get them out there where they have to get that deep half or whatever Yeah. and give Amari a chance to just burn them one deep. I see uh, Crab I Patterson. I mean, we we I I think even though you said it, it's gonna be lopsided, not necessarily a blowout. Yeah. If we get them early, man. Yeah. This would get ugly really fast. Real quick, bro. For them. Okay? Real quick. Real quick. Uh, Derek Carr is gonna have over three hundred yards passing this week. Okay. Okay. He's gonna have another three touchdowns. All yeah. right. I like it. That's what's gonna happen, and uh, I'm gonna say that he maybe maybe gets picked in this game. Yeah. Yeah, I th- I got this feeling. I'm not I'm not gonna go with it. Three touchdowns, one interception, but still no sacks. No on, sacks. No sacks on the season. And uh, what's another um, another matchup I had listed in this game was uh, that's right, Khalil Mack versus Morgan Moses. They're a right tackle. Who? So, Morgan Moses. Who? Morgan Moses. I don't know who you're talking about, man. Morgan Moses. <laughs> <laughs> so Moses struggled against Momo. Momo. No mo. <laughs> Khalil Mack versus Mac versus Moses. Um, six feet, two hundred fifty, six foot three, two hundred fifty pounds. Uh, he struggled against the Eagles in Week One, which is really all you need to know. And then sprained his ankle, so he's limited in practice this week, and he's got to block Khalil Mack. So Khalil Mack, they want to say that the, he got shut down in last week's game, but he still got his sack. He did get tied up, but everything got forced to the other side. And you know what? He's still disrupting plays. Max, one of those players where it may not show up on the stat sheet, but he's still disrupting plays. He's changing plays. You know what? They, they, they made a lot of, of that too, though. Even the announcers on 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 the on the broadcast were trying to make a big deal out of it. Mm-hmm. They're like, "Oh, Shell," which, by the way, is Art Shell's nephew. Mm. Uh, Jets Jets uh, right tackle mm. is uh, Art Shell's nephew. So mm. props to him for for having a career. But. Um, <laughs> Yeah, man, come on. You saw more of the same. People going over to help. 
They he wasn't doing it all by himself. He may no. have had a couple of plays where he stood up and he held his ground. Yeah. But come on, man. Yeah. You're not gonna you're not gonna play the whole game with one guy blocking Khalil Mack because you know what? You're not gonna win that. But look for them to get Mack into some positions this week. I say he's gonna have two sacks in this game. It's gonna be a big game for for Khalil Mack this week. I, I really see that. I, I just I have a feeling that Sunday Night Football is going to bring out the best of our best. You feel me? Yeah. I think so. Yeah. I think they're going to answer that call. And those are really the key, the key match, matchups that I saw. It's Again, their linebackers versus our running backs, Derek Carr versus their secondary, and Khalil Mack versus Morgan Moses. And, and I think, again, like I said earlier, Conley mm-hmm. on your boy, man, Terrell Pryor. Right, right. Because they're – this guy's this guy's they they traded for him or signed him to be their number one receiver. Yeah. He hasn't been that yet. Yeah. And I don't expect him to be that this week. So if Smith's a no go in this game, look to see more of TJ Carey and Emerson on the field. Carey moving down to the slot and Conley coming in on that nickel, which we run a lot. We run the nickel and we run the big dime a lot. The big dime is still usually three defensive backs, but with the bigger down linemen. Um so you'll you'll see that when you see us in a passing defense with Khalil Mack still in the, in the end position, we're in the big dime. I believe that's the formation. Also, another interesting thing came out this week. This is totally random, but um, form or fellow reporter, I guess you, I, I'll call him. Never met the guy, but Ted Nguyen, who's super awesome. He kind of cut his teeth on Twitter. He just joined the new website, The Athletic, with Vic Tafer. Um, thinking about actually paying for a subscription to that because those two guys are tremendous. Uh, anyways, Ted just released his Raiders offensive playbook breakdown, and it's like ten bucks, and it's super in depth. He's breaking down whole offensive concepts, and uh, it's pretty cool for those of you guys that like the nuts and bolts of things and really like to see the what and the why. Mm-hmm. As well as the how, I, I definitely recommend you look him up. He's always breaking down gifs. Him and shout out to Gypsy Safety. Both of those guys are tremendous. But Ted did just drop that guy, so check that out. Um, but I think he's gonna have a hard time keeping up this season because I just feel like we're just gonna be, it's gonna yeah. it's gonna keep switching. Yeah. Todd Downing's just a genius. Uh, well, it's not him. It's just the fact that him and Derek Carr are working together. They that's, work really good. That's together, a genius. Man. Yeah. Um, listen, Derek Carr, man, that he he's a new man, man. Mm-hmm. He recovered, and, and the dude's out there. Hell, I'm sorry. I'm having flashbacks, man. I'm I'm, I'm having flashbacks to Gannon, man. All right? Yeah. Gannon on the line. Yeah. Audibling, right? Call, calling plays on the line. Like, I'm having flashbacks to, to those days. And, and we remember those days were really good. Yeah. They were really good to us. They were solid. All right, so. Very um, fond of those days. That audible on the line. <laughs> yeah. You know, he audibled out of the running and, and, and threw that little fade route to Crab Man. That was beautiful. Yeah. That was beautiful. That's right. The Seattle Audible. We didn't even talk about <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, and also the 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 rush by Patterson was also an audible. So we found out that la- and I it was. I said he was, this. He was spread out and he brought him in. I yeah. said this in the offseason. I said that that Derek Carr was going to the line last year with three plays. Yep. And I said the next progression for him was to be able to have carte blanche at the line and make adjustments as he sees them, individual adjustments. And that's exactly what we're now seeing. And in fact, it was said last week, I believe it was, um, I want to say it might have been Patterson or uh, it might have been one of the linemen, but they, they, they affirmed that. They said Derek Carr now has the freedom to call anything that he wants at the line. And he did audible out of that. He brought Patterson. What was Patterson thinking, man, when he came up to, to Carr's hip like that? Like, whoa, this is it. Let's go. Was, oh, oh, I like it. Because, yeah, that's a different look, man. That's yeah, a different it, look. I thought you were – right now for a second, I thought you were going to say, what was Patterson thinking when he started jogging and looking back and smiling at people? <laughs> I was like, get, just get in the end zone, man. I was, I was about to freak out because they were kind of closing in on him. And then he was like, oh, let me get a little – little quick step here so um get past these guys yeah so just a little diversion there but uh it, it's all it's all coming together but check out check out the wins the wins book that's what i was trying to say um so we're going to talk about this uh injury report right here i've fallen and i can't get up <laughs> uh that was washington's offensive coordinator this <laughs> this week at the podium <laughs> oh man! Yeah. So, so looking at the Raiders injury report, we got Conley on there, still listed as shin uh, limited. He's probably just on kid gloves right now. They got him in bubble wrap. I expect him to play. Um, um, they're probably just taking it light. I'm assuming. Uh, Jared Cook again limited with a shoulder injury. We'll see if he can go. I don't know what the word is on him. Um, Cooper again with a knee. We've seen him pop on and off of the injury report since the season started with the knee. But expect him to be a full go. Dude's a soldier. 
Um, McGill is back to full. Uh, Alawale, uh, this quad injury is back to full. And uh, Sean Smith was full Wednesday. We told you with the next shoulder injury was limited again today. So it looks like he went Wednesday and had a little bit of soreness today. They're going to see how how it feels Friday. And then uh, if he's a go and practice Friday, I guess they'll call it on Saturday, depending on how he bounces back there. And then DeAndre Washington with the hamstring limited. Um, Again, that's not a killer right there. Washington, not a big part of our offense. You know, I'm a big fan of his, but that's not going to hurt us. So let's move on to the Redskins. We got, uh, first of all, their starting tight end, Jordan Reed. So we got a break last week when two of the Jets' tight ends were hurt. Um, they still had, what's his name? Uh, 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 I forget what the dude's name is, man. He's a Jets guy, man. I mean, come on. Am I supposed to remember these guys? No. No. Uh, anyways, anyways, that's embarrassing. But, um... <laughs> That's an embarrassing moment. I don't for even me. think Jets fans know who their tight end is. Man. I don't think the Jets have a tight end, <laughs> so that's also embarrassing. Um, anyways, Jordan Reed's hurt. He's got a rib injury. He did not participate Wednesday. He was limited Thursday. That dude is hurting. That's a guy that goes limited in practice because he has to. Um, I don't know if Jordan Reed does make it to the game on Sunday. I don't expect him to be a big threat, and and that's that's a I want to call him a weapon, but he's definitely a safety net on that offense. Um, the Shazer Everett, a safety, um, limited on Wednesday. It was a full go today. And then the rest of these guys were all limited. Mason Foster, again, who we just mentioned, they're starting inside linebacker. Uh, starting running back, Rob Kelly's a no-go. Um, I expect Chris Thompson to probably get the majority of those carries. And then they're starting tackle, Morgan Moses, who's going to be trying to block Khalil Mack all day. Ankle injury, shoulder injury, and then safety, Monte Nicholson. Again, that's not a big one for them. But, but Moses, Kelly... And uh, Foster definitely going to hurt, and and Reed definitely going to hurt these guys. And um, Josh Norman also limited with a shoulder injury, but expect that dude to go. That's your star corner. He's going to go. He's going to go. Yeah, returning to the to the squad was Spencer Long, uh, center Spencer Long, Josh Doxson, and Chris Thompson. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of players on the injury list for them. A lot of key players on there dinged up already in week two. Yeah, yeah, and the and the and the sad and the and the worst thing part the worst part of that whole thing is is that they already haven't been performing well so yeah 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 it looks so, look, doesn't look good it looks yeah it doesn't look good for you do we have an update on the uh pajama game tonight <laughs> the color no i don't have an update on that right. i took i took a peek uh when i went downstairs and um it was yeah the niners are back in black yeah what kind of come on man <laughs> look like pajamas dude Get the hell up out of here man. yeah so i don't know <clears throat> Now, who put the Rams and the 49ers on Thursday Night Football? Who thought that would be a good idea? <laughs> Rams are up 24-13 at halftime. Whew. So, yeah, it's, it's got the making of a blowout. Whew. It's going to happen. Um, anyway, moving on. We have some quick hits. <laughs> That's a quick hit sound. You like that? I like that, man. I like right. that. Jay likes that. It's good. It's good. All right, quick hits this week. Um, Cooper right now leading the league in drop passes with five drop passes in two games. I read that he had three total last year, but I think that's bad intel. I don't think that's right. It felt it felt it felt like he had more, but maybe we were wrong. Maybe yeah. we just were just mad at the ones that he did drop. I'll look that up and we'll have that that stuff for you in a second. But is it time to panic on Amari Cooper? No, man. Come on, it's not time to panic. He's still gonna do his thing, and uh, whatever, man. Just Put it out of your mind. We got so many weapons, dude. We're really going to be... Listen, he had five drop passes. He's had five drop passes in two games. Yeah. And we... Have we have we been concerned about our scoring at this moment? No. No. Hey, because we have a lot of a lot of other guys doing their thing too, man. Yeah. And no, even that being said, he's still doing his thing. No, that's right. He was 56th in the league last year, way down there. He had 83 targets and only three dropped passes. Wow. He was right there with Larry Fitzgerald. He had 107 targets and three dropped passes. So okay. um, he had a 63% percentage, 2.3% drop but rate. You, so. But you know what, though? Uh, you know what? So is that a fluke then? Is that what we're seeing? <sighs> fluke number? I put in a whole lot into that dude. I'm not either. I'm, I'm not, man. I'm Come not on, worried we, about we, it. we saw we saw the drops in the Tennessee game. Yeah, we were pissed, right? He had three, right? Yeah, three in the Tennessee game. Yeah, we were pissed about those. Yeah, okay, but but get, I, I, get over it, dude. I'm it's, tired it's, of hearing. We're gonna be I'm all right. Tired of him, yeah, yeah, you know what? What do you want to do? What do you guys want to do? Know, who are you gonna play? Are you gonna, you, you want to trade him? him? You want to trade him? You gonna replace him? 
I you guess, put him on the bench? I guess we're trading Amari Cooper now. Come on, man. I guess we're getting rid of Amari Cooper. Stop talking crazy, people. <laughs> Not everyone's going to score three touchdowns every week, everyone. Okay? And so uh, I apologize if I snapped at you this week, but I've had many people come up to me. Amari Cooper. <laughs> Yo, Amari Cooper. He's a stud, bro. Watch him. Keep the faith, man. Listen, Coop. Watch him. Have get, a- get your ish together, man. Okay? We don't want to see you continuing to drop passes. Okay? But... We're, we're going to go ahead and leave that in the past. And watch okay? it. I expect him to have a big game this week. Michael Crabtree is probably going to get the most attention from Josh Norman because of the big game last week. Because Derek Carr has another quick hit. Derek Carr has a perfect passer rating when going to Michael Crabtree. Oh. Quick hits. <laughs> so I had to dodge that one, man. Expect them to put their best cover corner on Michael Crabtree and expect Amari Cooper to feast on the other side. Um so DJ Swearinger, you got your hands full this week. Watch out. Mark Cooper's coming at you. Uh, another quick hit. Marshall Newhouse, 62 pass attempts against him or 62 pass attempts, zero rushes allowed. I've, I thought I saw one on Sunday, but he did not get credited for it. So I don't know what happened there. Yeah. But uh, 62 and zero. Keep doing your thing, Newhouse. We got to get Kennedy back on here. I'm going to hit him up, see if he'll oh. rejoin us. Because last year yes. he said the right tackle wasn't on the roster. And I believe we had not signed yet. No, we, no, no, yet. no, 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 no. So no, um, now not that yet. we have, let's see what he says. I don't know. I'm sure he's watching this. I like, I like to um, see what he, what his opinion is. I, 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 I really definitely would. would like to see what his opinion is. And check out his, his is it called Chalk Time or something Chalk like talk. that? Chalk Talk. Chalk yeah. Talk. Chalk Talk. Chalk Talk. Yeah, shout out. Check that out. You put me on that. That's that's nice. It's on YouTube. It's dope, check man. check it's it dope. out. Um, Lincoln Kennedy's Chalk Talk. All right. He, he was actually talking about the big boys up front this week. He was talking about he was talking about the old line man. All right, I, I, like I, I need to get that. on there. So did, did he say something about Marshall Newhouse on there? Uh, uh, no, specifically he was talking about Kalechi mm-hmm. and uh, and uh, and Hudson on one of the one of the oddballs where Patterson got got the run. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Good stuff, good stuff. Getting, into that, stuff, good getting stuff. into that second level. Yeah. Uh, quick hits. <laughs> Terrell Pryor Sr. Sr. Says he's going to have a monster season, and it starts Sunday against the Oakland Raiders. Guess what, Terrell Pryor? The season already started, bro. <laughs> season started two weeks ago, brother. Yo, did you just wake up or what? Where you been? Uh, it sounds a little bit like Terrell Pryor's bitter. Yeah. I, I know some bitter people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I won't say anybody's names, but <laughs> the fr- I know some bitter people. Terrell Pryor sounds bitter. I know bitter when I see it. Terrell Pryor wanted to be a quarterback when he was in Oakland. He yeah. didn't want to be a wide receiver. No, he didn't. Guess what? Now that he's in Washington, he's a wide receiver. I bet you he wants to be in Oakland. <laughs> see, that's why people are bitter, because they see people having things that they can't have. And Terrell Pryor, you could have had all of that. But guess what? You know what? At this point, you still wouldn't have been an Oakland Raider. Yeah. No. Because you, no. you know you're not good enough. You know you can't hang. And you know you don't belong in this Redskins roster. They're looking at you right now to carry the load. Terrell Pryor is not the guy to carry the load. I don't think so, man. Not that load. He was. <laughs> hey oh. Hey oh. Too late. <laughs> Too late. Quick hits. Anyways, that was a quick hit segment. Ooh, I like it. <laughs> um, now it's time for I See You. I don't have a sound effect for I See You, so let's just on three. I see you. That's it. <laughs> That's it. So I See You is a segment where if you do not go to the blog, I recommend you to go check out pj4f.com or pillagingjustforfun.com. It goes down in the comment section. Click on the most recent article or, blog or podcast post. Go all the way to the bottom of the page and jump in the fray. Every week we pull out one quote from the blog. This week, I see you, Rick. This week it's Rick the Pillager. He changes his name up, Rick the Pillager. He's a big fan of ours, a big listener, big uh, commenter, big provider of our community. He hails from Canada. And he says, I'm going for the Niners. Sorry, he says, I'm going for the Niners. Boda 49ers. I for that. what? For what, Rick? So I see you, Rick, but Jay Lofty, I see you too. Because Jay Lofty said, prepare to be blog punched in the balls. <laughs> <laughs> now, these aren't the most like sophisticated quotes that I pull out every week. These are just things that jump off the screen. 
You know, I like it. <laughs> these are just things that jump off the screen when I jump on there. Like I just pulled this off. I didn't scroll. I just looked, and there it was. And uh, just giving you guys a little bit of that flavor of how it goes down. You know, just a little bit of flavor. I'll do. I'll the do flavor in your ear. <laughs> it's the brand new flavor in your ha. Ear. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so so Rick, no disrespect, Rick. Uh, I know you're just kind of trolling a little bit, but Jay Lofty bringing it that's how we do um the 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 bay area rivalry is real i think it's only real amongst the fans but it's it's real it's real why is it real david it's real deal holyfield why is it real what do you mean why is do it giants real? and jets do does this happen in new york it does right i don't know what do they think about buffalo fan out there i don't know i don't know either i don't know i don't live <laughs> out there man I don't know. I, I live know. here. Yeah. And all I know is it's real. I want you guys to lose every single week. Yeah. Okay? And I don't care if you get butt hurt about it. Yeah. Okay? Because I know you feel the same way about me. And that's why it's so great when I look at the scoreboard and I see you guys are losing to the Rams. I've fallen and I can't get up. <laughs> Stay down. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. So with that, I, I think that's it for this week's show. What do you think? Yeah, man. I think it's good. I so, think I think we, did, we th- did the damn thing. I think we did We did everything. Uh, we, we left no stone unturned. We brought it. We pillaged. Um, we're looking forward to seeing you guys next week right back here, um, every week on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Stitcher Radio, anywhere your podcasts are sold. <laughs> um, but, of course, we're free. Also, follow <laughs> us on Twitter, at Pillage Just for Fun. That's at Pillage, just the number four fun. And on Instagram, at the Pillaging Podcast on Instagram, man. I like that. I think we're going to have to change up the Twitter to match that. It's a lot easier. Um, Also, uh, call us and leave a message every week to be played on air. 408-909-PJFF. I'm Kenny Stapler, joined every week by... Your boy, Che. Mm -hmm. And we out here. Go Raiders. Peace. Just win, baby. Shut down.